One of the best parts about old school RuneScape is that you are free to do whatever you want, whenever you want. Take it as slow as you want or as fast as you want. It's your own journey and you can do it your own way and your own style. But today, I'm going to show you ways you can build your account to set it up for success. Now, you don't have to do everything that I am going to mention in this video, but these are just some things I would personally do if I was making a brand new account today. If you guys like the video, make sure to smash the like button and maybe even consider subscribing for more. Now, the first thing I want to say is take it slow. You don't want to rush anything and you don't want to burn out. Burnout is definitely real and slow and steady always wins the race in the end. Also, consistency is key to playing this game. It's better to say play the game for one hour a day every day or play, you know, once every few weeks, but for 18 hours. It's better to be consistent with the game at all times. Okay, so now we're gonna actually talk about some of the things that I would do. The very first thing I would do on a brand new account is go right for my graceful armor. Graceful is really good armor, and pretty much what it does is it reduces your weight and makes your run uh, restore faster. So it can be extremely helpful for running tons of quests early game and just helping you get around the game because walking is very slow. You want to be running as much as possible. The good thing about getting your graceful knocked out of the way right away is that uh, you can train your agility up to 50, 60, 70, however long it takes you to get your graceful. I think it's about 55 or something like that, 60. But another good thing about it is you will unlock the agility pyramid and by the time you have your full graceful you won't be failing it as often so you can make some really good early game money at the agility pyramid pretty much what the agility pyramid is is it's a huge pyramid and you have to climb to the top and grab the golden pyramid top and you can trade it to a guy at the bottom for 10,000 gp so every single lap you can make 10,000 gp each lap does take you know five to ten minutes but it can be really good for low level accounts Next, I would set a huge goal and go right for the Barrow's Gloves. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because they require 175 quest points. So you're not actually just going for them. That's your long-term goal. I recommend you do all of the quests, the low-level quests, get your account rounded up, train some skills, get a feel for the game, and get a feel for completing quests. You get access to all of the towns in the game, and you can get some amazing unlocks for your account. Okay, so here are some of the quests that I would recommend you do at a lower level to get you kickstarted with the game and going for those Barrow's Gloves and the 175 quest points. So we have the Animal Magnetism, which will give you the access to the Ava's Backpacks. These are really good because they will save a lot of your ammunition that you fire, which will help you save money and great for training your range. The Backpacks also provide a range bonus, which is very helpful for low level range training all the way up into high level range training. Then we have Fairy Tales Part 1. This will give you access to fairy rings, which is a great way to travel throughout the game, especially when you are a lower level and don't have access to all of the spells yet. We have the Fremenic Isles quest. This one will take a little bit longer, but it will give you access to the Helm of Nezinot, which is going to be your best in slot helmet for a very long time, unless you're training Slayer, then obviously take the Slayer helmet. We have the Bone Voyage quest. This will give you access to Fossil Island, which there is a ton of content on Fossil Island. As well, this will help you kickstart your uh, getting your kudos in the Varrock Museum, which will help you later on in the game. Also, Fossil Island will give you access to Birdhouse Ronge, which is pretty much a passive way of training Hunter, which most people use Birdhouse Ronge all the way to 99 Hunter now. I recommend you do the Family Crest quest. This will give you access to cooking gauntlets, which will help you uh, burn less food, and you can cook uh, higher level food at a lower level. Also, they will give you the goldsmithing gauntlets, which you, when you smith gold, it will double your experience. So this is super useful for cooking and smithing. Next, I'd recommend you do the King's Ransom quest. This will give you access to piety, which is the strongest, currently right now, the strongest prayer for uh, the melee style in the game. So highly recommend you do that one. Tears of Guthix is a good quest to do right off the bat because every week you can do the activity there and you'll get uh, weekly experience in your lowest skill which is awesome and then i i recommend you do the throne of miscellanea quest this will give you access to the kingdom of miscellanea which you can make a lot of money from here 
Now, if you're still in the questing mood, I would really recommend you just go for the quest cape, get all of them knocked out of the way, unlock everything in the game. Here's some uh, final serious ones you could do. You could do Monkey Madness 2, very long, hard quest to get out of the way. One of the rewards for it, though, is a royal seed part pod which has unlimited charges and you can teleport and it's very close to a bank it also um, will let you teleport at 30 wilderness so it can be very good for escaping those pesky pkers dragon slayer 2 will give you access to the myths guild and also for uh fighting forkath which is one of the best money makers in the game song of the elves um, will give you access to the city of periftinus and uh, there's so much content inside of here so yeah those are once you get all three of those done you could pretty much do all the other ones and they'll be very easy also a notable mention regicide you can do zalra the money snake Another thing I really recommend you to do on your account is clue scrolls. Whenever you get an easy or beginner, medium, whatever type of clue scroll you get, just try your best to do it. And I understand maybe if you're an Iron Man account, you don't have the certain items or the stat requirements, but it can be a very good motivation to go and get those quests or levels out of the way or try and get the items best as possible. This is something I lacked at the start of my account, and I really wish I did those easy and beginner and uh, medium clues clue scrolls because uh, I ver I lack them a lot. I've done a lot of hards, a couple of elites, and I think one master, but I wish I did a lot more clue scrolls than I did because they can really help you build your account and get you some really good money or very useful unlocks if you are an Iron Man account. Construction is a huge one to get out of the way on your account. It can be very useful for so many different things around the game. You can pretty much get a maxed POH at a level 84 construction with all of the boosts in the game. We have things like the jewelry box, which will give you access to all of the teleports with jewelry in the game, which they'll have unlimited charges, very useful for getting around the game. We have the occult altar, which will allow you to switch um, between all of the spell books right from your house. So you don't have those very long walks in order to switch your spell book you can mount a cape in your house which you could have one that would be a quick teleport like the crafting cape for example right to a bank the ornite rejuvenation pool will heal everything that's wrong with you so your run energy your prayer your poison whatever is wrong with you it'll go right back up to 100 percent you'll be fully healed very useful for everything in the game here um, we have the portal nexus in your poh as well which will give you access to unlimited teleports throughout the game once you deposit enough runes into it so all of the regular spellbook teleports like falador verrock and stuff you can get in your uh portal nexus so very useful and handy then we have the spirit tree and the fairy ring or you can combine them and make a spirit fairy tree and uh, right from your house you'll have access to the fairy ring and the spirit tree amazing to get around and also in your poh you can store a ton of stuff like certain armors weapons and even uh, clue scroll rewards and also we can store skill capes in there there's so much storage with the poh you can save a lot of bank space you can also so put your pets in your POH to just walk around and also saving bank space there. You can mount a Xerix Talisman and a Dig Site Pendant to have unlimited charges so that you can get around the game here and you will never need to keep those in your bank anymore. You simply teleport to your house and you got every teleport in the game right there. You can make a Lectern and this will allow you to make teleport tablets or say bones to peach tablets. Extremely helpful and amazing. And the Armor Repair Stand will allow you to fix your Barrow's Armor for cheaper there's so much involved with construction that can really help your account so i really recommend from a low level investing a lot of the money you make into construction because it will pay off a lot in the long run for everything in the game I also recommend you start doing your achievement diaries as early as you possibly can. Start with the easy and then the medium, hard and elite. Um, you can do them for every town in the game and they will give you access to different perks around the town, which can be, some of them aren't as good as others. A lot of them are also useful for teleports around the game or bonuses. For example, with the elite uh, Lombridge, you won't have to use a Draymon staff anymore when teleporting with the uh, fairy rings. You also, there's just so many different ones. I'm not going to go through all of them in this video, but they're extremely useful. Every time you complete an achievement diary, uh, you also get a experience lamp. So say you complete all the easy uh, tasks in the desert, you will get a experience lamp. 
and then obviously when you complete all the elites you'll get an even bigger experience lamp this can help you to train your skills if you're more of a quester achievement diary person and there's a skill you don't really like too much well you can use all the experience lamps right on that skill and achievement diaries are just super useful to get out of the way and you can also explore new types of content with them that you might have never done before such as maybe chompy bird hunting or some mini games Speaking of mini games, some mini games that are really useful to do at the start of accounts could be pest control and get your access to the full void armor. Void is a really good hybrid armor that you can use throughout the game and all you have to do is get the pieces of void and then the different helmets and then it can be a ranged, it can be a magic setup or a melee setup. I really like void and also you can eventually with some more achievement diaries make it elite void and it's extremely great hybrid armor for your account. Great especially if you're an iron man. You can also do Barbarian Assault for the Fighter Torso, which is pretty much a free Bando's chestplate. Highly recommend new accounts do this and also get a feel for the Barbarian Assault minigame. It's actually pretty fun when you really get down to it. Another huge one to get out of the way is the Fight Caves and finally get yourself the Fire Cape, which is going to be one of your best in slot capes for training melee for a very long time and I feel like if you can take on all of the 63 waves and then finally kill Jad, you're ready for some serious PVM in the future. I highly recommend you start farming as early as possible on an account. You can even do things like herb runs, tree runs, or even the mini game the tithe farm. Farming is a skill that you passively train over time, so the earlier you start it, uh, the quicker you will get 99. And I honestly really like farming. It's one of those skills that really does take a long time to get into, and a lot of people don't like it. But start farming as early as you possibly can and try and make it a daily habit to always do it. This is one thing that's very... Uh, underlooked a lot of people don't tend to do this but get yourself a money maker I, a lot of people the most common question i get asks is how do you make your money um find a money maker that you like that might not be the best gp per hour but it's something you like maybe it's something you can gain experience from and you can do all of the time i highly recommend you find an afk money maker and also an active money maker that you if you ever need the extra gp you can go and do it and you won't mind it as much this will be extremely helpful to upgrade your gear buy supplies and uh yeah of other passive ways you can make money the best way would be slayer my opinion anyways slayer and bossing but uh konar is a really good uh slayer master that you can use even all the way up to level 95 for the alchemical hydra the thing about konar is he will he will assign you tasks she i guess will assign you tasks throughout the game and you don't really get to pick where you do it so they will say assign you abyssal demons in the slayer tower and that is where you have to kill them but you will get these things called brimstone keys and it will make every task in the game profitable so say hellhounds before weren't really profitable they would just drop bones and i guess now they drop ashes now they will drop brimstone keys and each time you open it it can be two 100k 200k it depends on how lucky you get and say you get five or six of these keys in a task you can make a lot of money Another thing I'm going to recommend you do on your account is to try content that you are uncomfortable with, maybe that you've never tried before. Some people hate quests. Well, that's why I said get the quest cape. Make yourself uncomfortable. Try farming. A lot of people hate farming. Get get into farming and fall in love with it. I was always a skiller and I was never really into PVMing and bossing, but now it is my favorite content in the game and I just started learning raids. And I can tell you right now, raids is my favorite content in the game. If you, if I would have said that a year ago, I would have laughed and been like, nope, I like woodcutting. But yeah, make yourself go into uncomfortable content that you don't really know too much about. And you'll learn a lot if you just give it a chance. And uh, you can really progress your account if you find ways that you really like training. One thing I was really stuck on was the Corrupted Gauntlet, but I really wanted the Bofa. So I spent two months of my life learning everything there was to know about the corrupted gauntlet a very uncomfortable situation for me was high-end pvm but i really got to learn it love it and i stayed there until i got the bofa i also got the pet and i also got the the sword that you get from there the blade of salador i couldn't think of the name there 
Another thing I would do is pick a favorite skill and go for 99 in it. So a skill that you really enjoy, maybe a skill you make a lot of money with, or a skill that you can just do over time, get yourself 99 in it. Once you get a 99, you'll feel so achieved and you'll kind of want to go for more in the future. Now, I wouldn't recommend just getting keeping all your other skills at like level 20 and then just going for say like 99 agility or something like that. I would keep all your skills to an average, right? So 50 plus, 60 plus all, 70 plus all, but a skill that you really like and enjoy, try and go for 99 in it and push yourself and see how far you can go. And last but not least is obviously have fun with the game. Don't force yourself to do anything you really hate doing. So for example, I have never really liked three ticking or two ticking things. So I've, I tried to get into it. I gave it my all, but it's just, it's something that's not for me. If there's a certain boss that's not for you, a certain skill that's not for you, don't force yourself to do it, but at least try out the content, right? You always wanna have fun with this game and avoid burning out because if you're gonna be logging in every day and doing something you really hate doing, then you're not gonna wanna play the game and you will burn out. So these are the ways that I would recommend you build your account today in Old School RuneScape pretty much take it really slow there's no need to rush get yourself graceful get yourself a lot of teleports throughout the game unlock all the content through questing build a massive house and then from there get yourself a couple 99s try out some of the mini games make a lot of money and train slayer and have fun anyways thank you guys so much for watching the video today if you want to head and watch the whole video comment uh, tuna down in the comments below thank you guys so much and i will catch you in the next one See ya later.